Hey guys, welcome back to another Vinny Built Structures video. Um, this video, I'm going to give you a, a little preview of the mock-up of uh, Shane's build that I'm doing. Um, and I also told you in my last video that I was going to show you all the stuff that would be painted up and uh, ready to go. But, I also said that I was giving up on these roll-up doors. I decided uh, not to give up. The Italian inside of me is saying you could do it. Um, so uh, stay tuned and I'll show you how I'm going to attempt to do the door a second time. Anyhow, stay tuned and I'll bring you out to uh, one of my work areas and I'll show you the mock-up of the building as it is right now. Uh, and then I'll show you what's going to be going on to try and change the uh, profile and the dimensions of the building. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Alright guys, we're out here at my uh, work area and as you can see, um, the dimensions on this building is 15 and a half inches wide by 24 inches long. What I'm not happy with is the total height of this building. Um, the proportions to me just don't look right and I told Shane that and he agrees with me so um, this is what the front's going to look like. And like I said, these two doors right here will be drive-throughs and this one here is going to dead end at the back of the shop in front of an office. Um, the problem I was having was with the roll-up doors. So, <clears throat> I guess I'm going to attempt to do the doors again and uh, let's see what happens. Um, I'm going to try and knock off, um, if you can see these lines on here, these are going to be scribe lines that I'm going to put in the building to make it look like they're concrete tip-ups. <clears throat> but, I want to try and knock off at least the top four inches. That will make the building look a lot better proportion-wise. Anyhow, um, stay tuned and we'll get back to the work table and I'll show you what I'm doing uh, to accomplish the doors. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back in my uh, little work area here um, in train room number one. That's where my uh, original work area was until I started doing these gigantic builds. Uh, but anyhow, um, my hard-headedness and my stubbornness, because uh, it's one of the traits of being Italian, uh, I decided I wasn't going to give up on these doors. So what I'm doing right now is, let me get you down to the work table and show you. I uh, took the advice of one of my subscribers, uh, Troy, who said I should make this curve a bit wider, and that's what I did. Also, um, I made these little spacers right here that fit right inside there, so I can get exact measurements of the width of the of the uh, framework. Now, uh, in order to get my curve, I'm using this flexible. Um, let me get the number here. It's number uh, 147, and it's uh, 40 thousandths by 156 um, styrene strips. Um, those, these are the channels. Um, uh, Shane has been supplying me with most of the uh, materials. And so what I need to do to get this curve right here is to put this on like that and then do my curve. Another mistake I was making um, on the previous build was that um, because of the thickness here and because I have to use this piece on the outside, um, when I put it in there, there's actually a little lip between here and the next thing, uh, the next channel. So, what I'm doing is I'm actually, um, well, the original one, I was putting that little piece inside uh, right at the beginning and right at the end of the curve. This time, I'm stretching it down a half inch, <clears throat> making these uh, instead of six inches at five and a half inches. So, they would fit in here, like so. Um, then my curve piece would go in here, like so. And then I would have another piece on the outside here. But like I said, when I put the second, uh, when I put, <laughs> sorry, this is hard to do. Uh, 
when I put the second uh, piece of uh, stripping on the inside, that's where the lip is. So um, to overcome that problem, like I said, I'm just going to make it a little bit longer here. So um, Shane, I'm sorry, but you're going to be the guinea pig on this one because this is a new build for me and uh, you're the first that wanted operating doors. And so uh, you may have to buy me some more channels. And I hope you're watching this uh, just to be aware of what's going on. Anyhow, <clears throat> if I can get this to work the way I want it to work, the way I see it can work, um, that means I could drop the height of the building down by at least four inches. Anyhow, uh, let's see if this is going to work. Um, this is all secured with uh, super glue. Um, like I said, the measurements are exact. So all I need to do is put it in here and butt it up against the bottom. Put the other one in here and butt it up against the other stop I have here. Like this. And put my two arch pieces in there. And let it dry up and then I build a second one. And then we'll see how it works with an actual door in there. Anyhow, stay tuned and uh, we'll get back. Bye. All right, guys. We're going to start the process of putting these uh, these doors together. So let's see if I can uh, get this going here. First, we'll put some glue on the back side of this channel. And for this, I'm just using uh, Model Masters glue. And then we will take our strip styrene uh, and we'll put it on there, right at the bottom. All right. messed up on that one. It's got to go on the side, not the bottom. You press it down, make sure it's flush. And of course I may have to do a little bit of sanding right here, but that's all right, no problem. So now, this is all glued in place. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the first guy into the jig that I made. There. Now let's put a little more glue on here. Sorry I'm taking so much time on these guys, but I really want to get these doors working. Anyhow, put them in there. Push them all the way down to the bottom. But right now, we're going to use this little clamp to hold them in place. Since I don't have enough of those clamps, I'm actually using jumper wires uh, with the alligator clips on it just to hold it in place, give it a second or two to dry up. In the meanwhile, you can push this guy into the curve. I know my hands are probably in the way, and I'm trying to avoid that, but I don't think uh, I'll be able to get this without putting my hands in the way. So now we get this guy in there pushed up against the curve as hard as you can and we'll go ahead and we'll put some glue on the next channel and stick the next channel in there and again because I don't have enough alligator clips I'll be using jumper wires uh, I guess the, I guess they'll work for now so we got this piece in there now and we'll go ahead and stick him in push him all the way down to the bottom We'll get this guy in here and push it right up as close as we can to that curve and make sure the other guy's down at the bottom and we will go ahead and use the other part of this uh, jumper wire put him right there sorry if I'm getting in the way guys but I got to see what I'm doing also from my uh, clamps and I'll we'll put him right about there and we'll put another one down there all right we're gonna let this dry up for a minute now let me uh, move the camera over a bit and I'll show you 
what I was talking about, the little filler piece that I got to do. Oh, hang on guys, I got to plug the camera in because I'm losing battery here. So we're giving this a couple of minutes to dry up. And in the meanwhile, we can take our second piece and we can slide him in here all the way down to the bottom. And tuck him in all the way around and pull him close to this curve right here. All right, so now with this guy in place, we're going to have to cut off a bit because he's just a wee bit too long. So, let's see, let's measure this guy out. We'll take him out real quick. And we'll go ahead and just give him a little snipperoo. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. All the way down to the bottom. Scoot them up to there. All right, and that fits perfect. Okay, now, you guys, uh, in the beginning of this, I told you I had to put a, um, a little filler piece right in here because this is where there's going to be a bump. But there has to be a filler piece, otherwise it, it'll uh, it won't it'll definitely hang up. So give me a couple of minutes to get this all together, and we'll come back and I'll show you the little piece I need to put in there. Uh, so we'll be right back. All right, guys. As you know, I was mentioning about a little uh, piece that's right in here. Um, I somehow or another lost the video part of this, but anyhow, it's already done. What I did was I took a piece of the uh, let me back this up a bit. Took a piece of that strip styrene and what I did was I filed down the edges here to make a little ramp on both sides. Then I measured it out and uh, made my piece and it fits, it continues the channel from here up to the second channel. I don't want to move this yet because it is kind of wet. Anyhow, uh, I did make kind of like a secondary um, uh, um, jig by adding this piece here and another stopper here so <coughs> I can keep it perfectly square when I add my cross brace and so I'm gonna let this dry up um, and we'll continue this on uh, another video um, for now um, uh, thanks for watching I hope you guys are enjoying this um, anyhow uh, let's get back to the rest of the video and we'll talk to you later bye all right guys um, now that I've got uh, the jig done and I got the uh, assembly done here, uh, I made a secondary jig right here so I can add this uh, cross brace right here. And so this is what we have. We slide it in here. And push it close and uh, push it up tight. And I also got everything all marked off to where I want it. As you can see, I have a line here and a line here. But uh, as, as it goes right now, this is going to be as far as I go with this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, guys, here we are at my work table again. And today we're going to be doing the uh, truss modification. Um, as you can see, this is the uh, stock truss that comes from Plastruct. And it is exactly 12 inches long. But we need to have a piece that's 14 and 3 quarters inch long. So, uh, these are pieces from the previous cuts that I did on the first two. Uh, so now I got this piece right here and I already ticked it off of where I want it to be cut. And that is exactly at 14 and 3 quarters inches. Make sure everything is right. Okay, 
So the next step would be to just take my uh, razor saw and we'll get in the tick marks that I already made. And we'll just uh, saw it down. And there you go. And now we got 14 and 3 quarters. And I'm doing it like this because I want all these, uh, all the webs to uh, be equal with each other. Now once we get this done, we'll file these edges down a bit. Just to make them smooth to get as, as good a connection as we can. And so now once we get this done, we'll keep my straight edge there. And what I'm going to use for adhesive is this uh, stuff that I used on uh, John Prescott's build when I did his plexiglass. It's for acrylics. It doesn't have a brush in it. It's supposed to be done with the applicator bottle. But for my purposes, we're just going to use a regular paintbrush. I'm going to dip it in. And we're just going to put it on there. And it'll, it'll capulate down there. And this stuff... Uh, evaporates pretty quick so I want to keep the lid closed and uh, give it a few seconds and once it uh, dries up it'll be a pretty strong connection but there you go that is trust number three all right I got two more to do and we'll just put this one on the side, let it dry up, and we'll grab our next one. And it doesn't matter which way these trusses are facing, as long as you match up the next piece along with it. And sometimes that could be a bear. So I have this piece now, left over for one of my other cuts that I did. And let's see if he lines up. And it's not too bad, actually. And make sure we're good. And we are, and so we'll just put a little tick at the 14 and 3 quarter mark, which is right there. And we'll go ahead and give this guy a cut. And this stuff is ABS, so you really can't use regular uh, glue for styrene. And I need to get a new razor saw. This one is quite old. Alright, let's see how we wound up with that one. Here is my ruler. Set them up at there. And set them up at there. And we're right at 14 and 3 quarters. Now sometimes your cuts don't come out very good. Um, like I said, I need a new razor saw. So we'll uh, just give this a little bit of a deal here. And we'll put them against there. And it looks like we could trim the bottom down just a bit. I'm trying to get these as straight as I can also. And then those strips that I made in my last video will be uh, supports for these guys to go across the top and the bottom. So now, how are we looking? Got to go a bit more. Now this is, uh, it's not a wham bam thank you ma'am it's uh, trial and error to get it all even and as straight as possible <clears throat> so let's see here oh that looks a lot better and we got 14 and 3 quarters Now, I'm not going to get these 100%, but as long as they look aesthetically uh, the same, uh, I'll be happy with that. Anyhow, uh, there we go, 14 and 3 quarters. So now we'll <coughs> take our uh, adhesive, 
and give it a little donkey do. And put them there and put them there and close them up. Trying to keep them as straight as possible. And I do want to close this up because uh, this little thing of uh, stuff cost me 14 bucks. Unfortunately, didn't stick very well on that one um, because it wasn't straight. But now I got it straight. Sometimes you need to just coax it into position, which I'm doing right now. I'm trying to keep it straight, level, and uh, there would be number four. And only one more to go. There'll be a total of five trusses in this in this build. Anyhow, um, I'm going to continue on with this and then we'll get to the next part which will be the front and rear walls that I'll be cutting out. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll be back shortly. Alright guys, what you're looking at is the uh, front wall with the uh, door openings cut out. Um, this first door here is uh, 4 inches wide by 5 inches tall and these two are uh, 4 inches tall by 3 inches wide. Um, I plan on building the doors after the framework is done when the framework is attached to the uh, wall um, once I get it attached I'll slide the door in and then I will put my uh, cross bracing on the on the uh, framework and also brace it up to the back wall back of the wall uh, anyhow uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll get back to this build here shortly um, talk to you guys later. Bye. Alright guys, the next step on these trusses is going to be, if you remember in my last video, I showed you I made these strips where they're going to go on the top and bottom of these trusses to give me a little extra support where my joints are. But uh, before we do that, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but there's a slight little ridge along the center of this here. So we're just going to knock that down and I'm using uh, 150 grit sandpaper um, and just lightly going over it just to get rid of that ridge and plus it'll give me a little bit rougher surface for the uh, adhesive to adhere to and uh, also it'll smooth out the joint that uh, we made when we put these things together but anyhow um, let me go ahead and finish this up and I'll show you the next part we'll be using uh, this applicator bottle and this adhesive um, to put this on here uh, like I said uh, this is ABS plastic so we need to have um, <coughs> the, uh, glue, the uh, adhesive I'm showing you <coughs> it smells almost just like uh, the uh, plastic weld um, glue or adhesive that Plastruck uses pretty very 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 similar in uh, in odor anyhow let's uh, get this done here and uh, we'll move on to the next part of this so hang on and we'll be right back all right guys I went ahead and put some uh, some of the adhesive in here in this little squirt bottle now I was I showed watched the video when I was doing John Prescott's build um, the way uh, when you tip this over it's going to give you a drip so the way not to have a drip is if you squeeze all the air out and then turn it over and let it go you don't have any drip and we'll start off with the middle and we'll work from there and yeah this is going to be a little bit of a procedure but I just wanted to show you guys how it's done um, so stay tuned and next time you see these these trusses will all be done uh, I'll be right back Alright guys, here's the next step in these uh, truss um, part of this build. Um, as you can see, they're all primed and ready for paint. Uh, they are actually dry enough for me to put the top coat on, but I'm going to give it a whole day or maybe at least a couple more hours before I put the top coat on it. Uh, the top coat is actually a primer also, but um, <clears throat> for now, uh, I will tell you that uh, I was using 
this stuff here, but it was getting kind of sloppy on me, so I decided to try uh, super glue. So the last two of the uh, trusses that I did with the strips, I used super glue. Uh, seems to be working. Anyhow, um, that's going to be all for this right now. Next time you see these, they'll be painted, and uh, we'll move on to the next part of the video. Thanks for watching, and uh, for now, I'll be back in a little bit.